Your time. Let's bring in Jeff Powell, Managing Director and CIO, Polaris Greystone Financial Group, live out of San Francisco. And I guess it all depends in about uh, four minutes' time, five minutes' time. What happens with that daily remnant B fix, Jeff? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you know, it's going to be very interesting to see if they're def going to defend their currency or not. It's pretty hard to argue uh, that they have not been allowing uh, some slippage within their currency, be it you know being done purposely or just not defending it. But the, the Chinese have a, a history of defending their own currency, at least over the last 30 years or so. Uh, it's slipped over 5% since the escalation of the trade wars that began back in May. So it seems a little strange that they would allow this slippage. It seems like a, a way for them to be able to combat some of what's going on with the tariffs that are already in place on some of their goods right now. All right, so the U.S. side, the thing we're listening out for is whether or not I think the president uh, starts uh, 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 hitting out at uh, Chair Powell and, and, uh, and company at the Fed, one, and two, uh, and are you expecting that? And two, uh, what is the likelihood of the U.S. actually intervening to try and tame or bring the dollar down? You know, I would say that it would be an extreme case for uh, Fed Chairman Powell and the Treasury uh, to intervene at this moment. Uh, there's a lot of other things that can be done between now and then. Um, normally, a currency war has no winners to it. So it, once we start lowering our currency, what can end up happening is it can have material impacts on the Japanese economy, the German economy, a lot of the other trade partners that we do not want to see anything bad happen with. We, there's a lot of unintended consequences that can occur if you start playing this game of, uh, of currency wars. It's an interesting point, Jeff, because stra some strategists over in the U.S. have said, you know, essentially if Treasury does decide to intervene, um, they've got a number of assets that they can play with. They've got about $94 billion in total, but that is not enough to actually make a significant difference if the U.S. acts alone on this. I mean, do you think there's any chance at all that there could be some kind of uh, a multifaceted intervention where there are other countries involved as well? I, you know, so to your exact point, there's over tr a trillion dollars that are traded on a daily basis. So we've got the 94 uh, billion dollars of reserves. There's another guesstimate about another 70, 80, maybe 100 that the Treasury can bring in as well. But you're still talking under 200 billion dollars once that it would be going into effect versus the daily trading that's going on. So it would be very, very challenging for the U.S. on its own to be able to do this. Now, you brought in, up the point of would there be other people that would step in and help, but the U.S. has gone at this trade war by itself. And yeah. so it would be one thing if we were already in a situation where we had a trade deal with the European Union or if we already had a, a, a solid trade deal with Japan that we could go at this and combat the, what's China, what China is doing on its own uh, with another partner. But it looks very unlikely that that would happen. So yeah. the U.S. would have to be very committed to this and it would take a very long time for it to happen. I think you're spot on there. There's an, certainly an element that the U.S. has alienated um, itself, or certainly the White House and, and the administra administration towards the other countries um, around the world. I guess the next question then is, is for investors who are out there and watching what is happening here. Where is the place to be? We are seeing upside in gold. We are seeing upside in, in yen. I mean, the, the usual traditional safe havens around the world, we're really seeing money flow into those particular assets. Um, what are you telling your clients when they're ringing you going what do we do here Jeff yeah so we are a tactical investment management firm what I mean by that is that we will increase and decrease uh, kind of a risk on risk off type of investments so going into today we were already sitting on about 20% cash uh, for our 100% equity strategies. We did take some of the more highly volatile stocks, three or four positions off today to get a little bit more defensive going into the next few days. It's really going to be a wait and see type of thing as it escalates and potentially becomes a bigger and bigger deal. This could be a very short test of each other's wills or this could be the beginning of a true escalation of currency war as well as an escalation in the trade war already that's progressing.
And you got to figure the Chair Powell uh, must be pretty nervous uh, at this stage. We've got markets pricing in fully another cut come September. But what's even more interesting is, uh, you know, when, when you dig into the guts of it, markets are now pricing a 30% chance, one in three chance of that September move being 50 basis points. You think that's going to happen? Yeah. You know, again, what you're saying, right now the futures, at least as I left my office today, was a 60% probability in September of a one, uh, a 25 basis point cut, a 40% chance at having a 50 basis point cut. If you move out to December, you're looking at the highest probability of having 75 basis point cuts between now and the end of the year. So is it possible? Fed Chairman Powell has been pretty steady about, you know, a wait and see. So my best guess would be we go 25 basis points, see how it's going, and then keep some extra powder dry so that he can make additional cuts throughout the year as necessary. Mm. All right, so maybe 325s is what you're talking about. Okay. All right. That's exactly so, correct. So again, he's going to he's going to be cautious here. Okay. Good stuff, uh, Jeff. Such a pleasure to have you with us today on what is a, a very very big day. So we certainly appreciate you coming out to chat to us here on CNBC.